In my last couple of videos, I got a couple suggestions from a YouTube subscriber, and I actually decided to go down the rabbit hole a little bit and look into what this guy suggested. So I'll put a little snippet up on the screen here, uh, just showing what this guy suggested, and then we'll talk about it. So his name, of course, I'm going to butcher this name because I don't know how to pronounce these. I think it's Medi. Med Medi, I'm not really sure. Sorry for pronouncing your name wrong. I'm sure I did. But he says, uh, please name your model recipe DTO, DTO for network and recipe entity for database, recipe for domain. And then he says, do you agree? So I've never heard of this naming convention uh, DTO before. I've heard of you know DAO for database caching or data access objects, which is typically used like room persistence library. You have that DAO class entities for the models for the, the local persistent database also. But I'd never heard of DTO before. So I, I did a little bit of research and it turns out that I actually agree with this naming convention. I like this naming convention. So we're going to change uh, the way that I've named things a little bit. And I think this is going to be better for everybody because in the software world, this is a, a common naming convention. I'm actually going to pull up the uh, Wikipedia page on this right now. And we can take a look. So here I am on Wikipedia and it says a data transfer object. That's what we're looking at. And of course, here is this uh, Wikipedia asking me for money. Little do they know, I already donate them every month. I give them some money. So if, by the way, if you don't donate to Wikipedia, you should, because I'm sure you use Wikipedia. Everybody does. So, you know, go donate a couple bucks to Wikipedia. Anyway, so DTOs. Well, let's just read this really quick here. So it says, in the field of programming, a data transfer object, or DTO, is an object that carries data between processes. So obviously in our application, we're not carrying data between processes. We're going to be carrying data or serializing data between, you know, in, in, in terms of the network, from the network to the app or from the app to the network. The motivation for its use is that communication between processes is usually done resorting to remote interfaces, e.g. web services. So this is kind of a Along the lines of what we're doing, we're using a web service HTTP request to the server, and where each call is expensive operation. Anyway, blah 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 blah. If you keep reading, it says the difference between data transfer objects and business objects. So here now we're getting into kind of the good stuff because we we know we do have business objects. That's our recipe model that we have in our application or data access objects. Is that DTO does not have any behavior except for storage. Retrieval, retrieval, serialization, or deserialization of its own data. So this is this is the important kind of sentence I would say here. So it's a way to just kind of name things such that hey, we know that this is different from the business model. We know that this is different from any of our business logic. We're just essentially going to be serializing this data so that we can use it in our application. That's what we're doing. We're serializing the network data that's coming in from the server. So there's a couple of reasons why I am going to move over to this naming convention. Number one is it seems to be a common pattern in the software world naming, uh, you know, it's an it's a way to name your network models, your network things that really don't have to do with the business logic. They're just there to like, you know, model the things coming from the network, serialize, deserialize. So I like I like the whole description here. That's number one. Number two is typically what I did in the past is I would have my domain or my my domain model, then I would have, you know, caching entities. So a model for the database, the persistence layer. And then for my network entities, I would name them, I would just call them network entities. So for the cache stuff, I would have like, you know, recipe cache entity for the network stuff I would have recipe network entity so you know my naming here is not that great not to mention the naming is very long so if I could instead have like you know recipe entity and then I know okay that's for the cache and then have recipe DTO and I know okay that's for the network it's it cuts down on the the, the size of of the names that I have to write and it's meaningful so I mean I, th I just think it makes sense I think this is a better uh, sort of way to follow naming conventions. So we're going to go into the project and we're going to do some refactoring. There's four classes that we need to change. It's not going to take long. It's only going to take a minute or two. And as a bonus, I will record another video today because I didn't in originally intend to make this video. So it's kind of, you know, it's like a bonus video. You're getting a bonus video today. I'll release two videos today. So make sure that after you watch this video, Go watch the next video today and we're going to begin setting up the repository for this app. Okay, so let's go into domain and go into util and open up our entity mapper. 
and we are going to change this. So currently the way that we built this is it's called Entity Mapper and the whole focus of this kind of little interface is either mapping from the entity or mapping to the entity. So like the focus of the class you could say is on the entity. Well, we're gonna reverse this. We're gonna reverse it so that the focus of the class is actually on the domain model. So let me actually open up the project pane here and just right click on Entity Mapper, click on Refactor, go to rename and let's rename this uh, domain mapper. So again, we're we're flipping the focus. The focus was previously on the, the entity, quote unquote. Now it's on the domain. So what I'm gonna do is change this keyword entity. So I'm gonna go to refactor on this again, rename this to T, press enter. And there is a reason why I'm refactoring this instead of like just straight up, you know, changing changing the name of this. Uh, by right clicking and clicking on refactor, that actually uh, lets Android Studio correct all the other classes that this is used in. And I'll show you what I mean. So just as an example, let me go into uh, network, go into model, go into recipe network mapper. So notice that, uh, you know, notice that this function is called map from entity. Well, now I'm gonna change this. So I'm gonna go right click on map from entity, go to refactor and click rename. And we're gonna re rename this uh, map to domain model. So again, I'm, I'm kind of drastically changing this. But when I click enter, notice now inside of our recipe network mapper, this has changed also. So if I was to just like rewrite this, like if I just call this uh, map from domain model, and I go up to my, my mapper, it doesn't get changed. So by clicking on refactor, that will update all of the other classes. So I'm gonna press control Z to, to undo that. And uh, now I'm gonna change the name in here. So mapping to the domain model. Well, I'm gonna right click and I wanna change this name. So renaming this just to model. And then it's gonna have this big pop up here and it's gonna say, say hey, no, I noticed that you have this naming inside of this class. Do you want to rename it to model? So click the check mark here, yes you do. Click OK, and then there you go. Now the other class will get updated. So right now we're mapping um, to a domain model from some type of T. Now the next one is gonna be mapping uh, from a domain model. So click on refactor, go map from domain model, and that's gonna update all the other classes. This can stay the same because it's a domain model and then we're outputting some type of T. Now the reason I changed this to T as opposed to having entity is because this is gonna have a dual purpose. This mapper will be used for mapping uh, domain models to entities, entities to, do to domain models, and also it's gonna have a purpose of mapping DTOs to domain models and uh, domain models to DTOs. So it has a, a dual purpose. That's why I'm using this type of T so it can be used, you know, for pretty much anything. Now keep in mind in this particular project, in this course, this is the beginner course for the MVVM Jetpack Compose stuff. Uh, there is gonna be no uh, database layer. So we're only getting data from the network. We're not saving it in the cache. So there is gonna be no entities, but it's important to, to you know, follow these naming conventions because you know, after this course, I'm gonna build a second course where I add the database cache, I add a caching strategy. So all that stuff is gonna be in there. We're gonna have use cases, database caching, we're gonna do some unit tests. So it's important to follow these conventions because of course, in a real app, you will have all of these layers. So let's keep on uh, renaming. So the next uh, class that we're gonna rename is the recipe network map, or not the recipe network mapper. We're gonna rename the uh, recipe network entity. So again, like I said, I'm now gonna be following the convention of uh, using DTO when I'm when I'm denoting you know a network model or a network serialization model. So right click on the recipe network entity, go to rename. And this is much, much shorter now, which is one of the main reasons why I like this. Just call it recipe DTO for recipe data transfer object. Now open this up. And uh, there's another thing that I actually did forget in the previous videos too. We can call this a Kotlin data class because it's really just a data holder class. That's another convention that you wanna follow with Kotlin. Anytime you have a class that is just strictly for, you know, holding data, then we wanna use that data kind of um, identifier for the class. Okay, so now we have our recipe DTO. Now let's go into our recipe network mapper. Open up the project pane over here, and again, right click on this, go to refactor, and we're gonna call this recipe DTO mapper. Again, a much shorter name, which I like very much, and all the other stuff should be pretty much updated since we, we did the refactor on this class. So all of these class names should be all updated. So all of the all of the stuff in here should be kind of already good to go. We just need to change the name. 
Now the last kind of update that we're gonna do is go into response, go into recipe search response, and call this a data class. Again, that's just a Kotlin convention. Whenever you have a data holder sort of class, you wanna give it that data keyword at the front. So again, I just wanna mention that this isn't gonna be super like apparent why I'm doing this if uh, if you especially have no experience with, you know, setting up a caching layer, setting up a persistence layer, because these naming conventions are going to seem silly to you. You're going to say, why are we wasting time building the exact same class with basically a different name and then mapping to these other classes? Well, it, again, it's all about scalability. It's all about testability. It's all about separating these layers, because typically if you're getting something from the network, you're serializing it, you're deserializing it. That's going to be a different data structure than your domain model. Uh, and then the same thing with your caching layer and any other layer. So it's always better to just model, model it out, even if it's slightly different, or even if it's not different at all, because in the future, it might change. Your data from the network might change slightly, and you don't want to have to update your domain model, which will cripple your entire application just for one field to change in uh, a, a layer model. So that's why we do it. That's now you understand why I changed these names and hopefully it makes sense to you. And now in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the repository. So we're going to build out our single repository. Again, we're not doing use cases. We're not going to do multiple repositories. This is a very simple app. We're just getting data from the network. We're doing a couple network calls, two to be exact. So one repository is perfectly fine. And in the next video, we will set that up. Again, I'm, I'm gonna release that video today, right after this one, so make sure to go watch that video. YouTube probably won't give you a notification. If I, I think if I release two videos like fairly close to one another, it only gives you like one notification. So make sure to go to that video, leave some engagement down here, leave some engagement on the next video, and I will see you there. One more thing before I go, I actually forgot to mention, I'm doing a contest right now where you can win a free yearly subscription on my website. So it's gonna be the founding member subscription, which is the best subscription out there. 365 days of unlimited access. You can watch any one of my courses, download the videos, join Discord. Basically, it's an it's an everything, it's an you get everything subscription for a year. So I'm giving that out for free. And you have to to win this contest, you have to enter by uh, creating a thumbnail for my newest course, which is this course right here, the MVVM Jetpack Compose course. You're gonna create a thumbnail, you submit it and I pick the best thumbnail and then whoever wins gets the yearly subscription. So if you want to submit your thumbnail, just post it on Twitter. I'll actually show you the tweet where I, where I tweeted out the contest and you can just post it on Twitter and I'm gonna be picking the best one that I see on Twitter. So here's the tweet that I made. Mitch underscore Tabian is my Twitter account, so make sure to go follow me. Uh, it says, I'm doing a contest, design a thumbnail for my MVVM Jetpack and Pose course. It's gotta be 1280 by 720. That's the size of the image. The winner gets a founding member subscription, which is $240. And I, I um, shared a Dropbox folder with some images of me that you can use in the thumbnails. So if you click on this, there's just like a bunch of images in here. You can use any one of these images. It doesn't mean you have to use the images. I'm just saying like they're here if you want to use them. And uh, yeah, build a thumbnail. So some people have already been submitting. You know, there's one, uh, there's one, there's, uh, that one's a good one. That one's a good one. That one's pretty plain. Uh, this one I think is in the lead, right? Or no, this one's I think second right now. That one's pretty good. Uh, oh, that one's, that one's really good. I like that one. Um, so anyway, a bunch of thumbnails here. Make sure to go and submit your thumbnail. Just, just publish it on Twitter and tag me in it. And I will pick the winner on Friday, which will be, let me just take a look. It's going to be Friday the 18th. So Friday, December 18th, I will pick the winner. Thanks for watching and get out there and go make some thumbnails.